Are you a late bloomer? Maybe it's because of your personality type. A late bloomer is someone whose skills, abilities, or talents only become apparent to everyone else at a later stage in life than what is typically expected. So while some people might be well along their career path at age 25, others may go for years seemingly floundering until they find their way at age 50 or later. So this video is gonna look at how your Myers-Briggs personality type might be influencing your blooming timeline. Let's start with the earliest bloomers who are the speed racers. ESTJs and ENTJs are the the obvious examples here. They're the most productive types on average and statistically they earn the most money. They see life as a competition and strive to reach the top as quickly as possible. They're the most likely to jump into higher education or their chosen field right after high school. ISTJs are interesting because they bloom early but they don't view life as a race. To them life is like a long sidewalk that stretches out very straight in front of them for a long way into the distance. Even in their youth, they start planning and considering how to have a stable and happy future. And while ISTJs might not be running out of the gate in the same way as the last two types we talked about, they are indeed progressing steadily. I think the wild card for this first category of early bloomers is the ESFJ. So their version of early blooming might involve getting married and building a family in their early 20s or engaging in social activities such as joining a community service group, getting active in their community. They don't want to waste time fumbling around or doing nothing like some of those types. Man, <laughs> they're just loafing. You could even say they're lunching. The second category we're talking about are the planners. They bloom perhaps at an average stage in life. You could say maybe a little earlier than average, but they've taken the time to scope things out a bit and give their brains a bit of space to formulate a plan. They're not just like jumping out of the gate, showing everyone, hey, here I am. I'm blooming. I'm blooming. <laughs> INTJs, they're stereotypical planners. Among all the types, they're most likely to choose one specific goal, such as earning a particular degree, accomplishing some business uh, accomplishment, <laughs> attaining a specific income, starting a certain company. They work diligently towards their goal, primarily competing with themselves rather than others. Though they will be very aware of what other people are doing, they, they have a vision that they are following, that they are holding themselves to. ISFJs highly value stability. So they're not an early bloomer like their sister type, the ISTJ, mostly because as feelers, they're in less of a rush to get out into the workforce. However, they are likely to go to school, find a stable career, and bloom at about an average pace. ENFJs enjoy keeping busy and being so Social. While they might not have a specific goal in mind, they often have a broader vision they want to work towards. Because of this, their talents and skills start to emerge at a fairly average time. They take a little longer to fully bloom, but I wouldn't say that it's enough to make them late bloomers. Our third category consists of the eventually the types that lack typically a clear idea of what they want in their early years, but eventually find a successful profession or life path a little later than average. This marks the transition from early bloomers to late bloomers. These are the people where you're kind of like, is this person ever gonna do anything with their life? Oh, okay, oh, they, they figured it out. You're not getting too worried with them, but the, you're make, these types are making people sweat a little bit. Will they bloom? This first one might surprise you. You might have thought the ESTP would have been one of the early bloomers, but no. One of the ironic things that can trip up ESTPs is that they're often too good at a lot of different things. They like to have a lot of irons in the fire. They like to have their fingers in a lot of different pies. <laughs> so for example, ESTPs are naturally entrepreneurial. I mean, what, the, the websites out there, they call them the entrepreneur as their type, very, oh, very original. But uh, they may have like three different companies that they're trying to run at the same time rather than picking the best one and going all in on that. It can take them a while to figure out that they need to commit to one thing which lets their skills fully bloom. ENFPs <laughs> spend a significant portion of their early years having fun, exploring, seeing what the world has to offer. They have countless ideas for exciting things they could do, exciting paths they could follow, but in their mind, why invest the energy into narrowing down their prospects when they can simply enjoy themselves? Consequently, ENFPs often bloom late because they are not in a rush to find out which path is the right one. They're like, whatever, baby, I, I, <laughs> it ain't no thing but a chicken wing. ISTPs prefer doing things their own way. They take more time 
time than other types to develop their skills because they prioritize learning things properly rather than rushing for short-term gains. So they keep their head down and work hard, not worrying about whether or not they are blooming at the right time based on everyone else's arbitrary standards. ENTPs are somewhat different in this category as they may initially appear to be early bloomers due to their strong desire to succeed and excel. And it may even be apparent early on that an ENTP is brilliant and talented. The problem is that ENTPs have a tendency to switch paths frequently and get pulled in various directions, which can delay the point at which they really hit their stride. INFJs tend to have a general vision for their future, but they don't usually have a sense of urgency to get there quickly. This can be tough for INFJs because to others, they appear to be late bloomers who haven't figured out what the heck they're doing with their life. And maybe even to the INFJ themselves, they're like, I don't know if I can even really articulate uh, what, what I'm doing. But the truth is that INFJs are figuring it out at their own pace. They're letting those details emerge slowly over time. INFJs are like, I know that like somewhere subconsciously I haven't figured out. I'm just like letting my intuition kind of feed it to me bit by bit. Lastly, we come to the real late bloomers. It's like a reality show, The Real Housewives, except it's the real late bloomers. <laughs> it's just a house full of unemployed people <laughs> in their late 30s. So these types usually take much longer than others to find their stride or discover their specific path in life. They might not even desire to be on a path. They might see such a concept as limiting the way they wanna live their life. They might reject the entire paradigm of blooming. What, what, you think my name is uh, Harold Bloom? <laughs> that I'm gonna, I'm gonna bloom suddenly? For? I find this makes no sense. So earlier I mentioned how ESTJs and ENTJs achieve the most success and make the most money quickly in life. Well, INFPs and ISFPs are like on the complete opposite end of that spectrum and typically earn the least of all the types. It's not because they're lazy, but it's because they often find money and conventional metrics of success uninteresting. They prefer to spend their lives creating art, enjoying the company of friends, traveling, or working odd jobs that are fun for them. Now, late bloomers among these types often emerge as creatives in their later years, having spent decades working on projects like a book series or a painting. What matters the most to these two types is that they pursue their passions instead of chasing success. ESFPs are not likely to map out a plan for their lives. Why dedicate yourself to making money or climbing a a career ladder when you can just like enjoy your life right now. They may switch jobs or life paths every few months or years simply because their previous choice got too boring or too predictable. To others, it may seem that ESFPs never truly bloom. However, in reality, an ESFP's version of blooming is living life to the fullest. Their version of blooming is the friends we made along the way. INTPs spend years experimenting, theorizing, learning, and delving into their interests without a specific end goal in mind. Or at least they can do that without a specific end goal in mind. The process itself fascinates them more than whatever the final outcome may be. So consequently, in their later years, they may suddenly present a revolutionary invention or idea that changes the way people think. So they're like making progress equivalent to 20 years in one day. That's why INTPs are perhaps the latest bloomers of all the types. They spend years thinking and consuming information and learning until finally one day, they're ready to burst on the scene and make everyone go, where did this guy come from? He came out of freaking nowhere. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay cool and attractive. They say a stranger's come to town.